I'd like to remind you that today's video is brought to you by the word transversal and alternate, or sorry, that, that's vertical, vertical angles, transversal, vertical angles, and uh, supplementary angles, and linear pair and huh, corresponding um, for those words. We're probably going to see them in our video today. Page 324, we are finishing out the activity. Triangle sum and exterior angles. Uh, we are going to talk about exterior angles in this video. Let's get into it. Consider another diagram that you can use to prove the triangle sum theorem. You should make a note card. It should probably have something like this on the back of it. The definition, an example, like how you might see it written out, and then some related vocabulary that's going to happen. Because in this video, we're going to talk about exterior angle theorem, which is on the bottom of page 324. Let's get into it. Explain how the diagram demonstrates the triangle sum theorem. Remember, in the triangle sum theorem, you're going to talk about how the three angles, that's upside down, I realize, the three angles have to add up to make 180 degrees. And we did that because on our picture from page 322, we put three corners of a triangle together. And when we did together, they made a straight line. So three angles of a triangle have to add up to 180. This is the auxiliary line that we drew on the previous page. And it actually turns out that uh, angle E and angle A are corresponding, right? So angle E and angle A, I should just write the word congruence because they are corresponding. I can also say that uh, angle D and angle B are congruent. So angle D is congruent to angle B because they are not corresponding. They are alternate interior angles. They are on opposite sides of this transversal. So that's one of the transversal sides of two parallel lines. They're on opposite sides, but they're between these parallel lines. So they for, therefore, alternate interior angles. And they must be, hey -oh, congruent. So we can say that as well. Alternate interior angles. Because angle C, angle B, and angle A form a straight line, then the measure of all three is 180. They are a linear pair. But angle E and angle A are swappable. We can substitute angle E with angle A. And uh, angle D and angle B are congruent. So we can substitute angle D for angle B, which means, which means, pause right here to see if you can get to the answer before I do. Okay, you didn't pause, but that's all right. The measure of angle uh, E plus the measure of angle D plus the measure of angle C equals 180. And if you look at the diagram, E, D, and C are the inside angles of the triangle, which therefore means the interior angles of a triangle sum to 180 degrees. It appears that there is a relationship that exists among the angles of a triangle, both inside and outside. And you can see it in the top of the video screen here. Here is an expression, A, B, C, all add to 180. The measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C, that equals 180. But through substitution, through substitution, the other thing that equals 180 can also be there. So I'm going to write equals the measure of angle E plus the measure of angle D plus the measure of angle C. And do you realize that C showed up in two sides? It showed up on the left side of the equal sign. It showed up on the right side of the equal sign. And if you have something that's the same on both sides of an equation using the stalling for time subtraction property of equality, we can equally subtract angle C from both sides. Get zero. And over here. 
So therefore, what's left is also a true statement. I mean, if it wasn't equal, then you wouldn't have truth in your value. So we're going to rewrite what's left. We're going to write the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B equals the measure of angle E plus the measure of angle D. And if you look at the diagram, these are the exterior angles. They need to get highlighted. Exterior and labeled. They're the exterior angles. Look at where they're positioned on the outside of angle C. But, however, keep in mind, they have to be equal to something. So on the other side, angle E and angle D, those are inside the, the triangle, but they're also called remote. If you do something remotely, you're doing it from afar, right? We had remote learning last year. Oh my word, what a year, right? Or whenever you're watching this, do you remember doing remote learning? That's because you were afar or away from school. So these remote angles are away from the exterior angles. They're on the inside, so they're called remote interior, and they happen to be equal. That's exactly the exterior angle theorem. The measure of the exterior angle, so adding up those pieces, call it one total angle. It's equal to the sum addition, the sum of the measures of the two remote interior angles. I guarantee there's going to be like some solving questions you're going to have to do with this. Anyway, there it is. That is what we need to write down for the, stalling for time, exterior angle theorem. If the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the measures of the two remote angles, you see what I did? See what I did? I drew that diagram from the book, and now it's on a note card so that I can remember it for the future. Something I didn't do right now. Uh, these are remote interior, and these are the exterior. All right, I added it here. You saw me add it. You were there. Thank you for watching this video. Think about this question. Uh, why does the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C equal 180? Hmm? Like, comment, and subscribe.